Hello. So today is day 14 and our chapter today is what else are you craving? And this verse, it starts with is Psalms 139, 13. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. And this chapter is all about, um, she's just sharing how um, sometimes, like, especially this far, two weeks into the fast, um, maybe you're starting to turn to other things instead of sugar to fill that void. And instead of letting the God who intimately knows you, who formed you and created you, fill those spaces, because only He knows how to love you the way you need loved and fill um, those heart longings and just those deep soul cravings. And it's all about just examining your heart and asking the Lord, like, you know, am I trying to fill this void with something else? Now that I've taken out sugar, am I just replacing it with some other thing? Or am I actually seeking more of Jesus and letting him fill those places? And and just talks about how God is so eager to rush into all those empty places that we long to fill if we just go to him. And I'm not going to read a bunch in the chapter today. I'm just going to share a little um, about my day. And, you know, I went to church this morning on Sunday, and it was a wonderful church service. And really spent a long time in worship and just, in fact, we sang the song, fill me up, God, fill me up until I overflow. And, and, um, I just felt so filled, you know, by the Lord. And, you know, that lasted most of the day. And then some life happened, stuff happened that really got to me bad, bad. And, and I got really angry and... Um, and I didn't just turn to Jesus. So actually I went to, um, and I didn't make the best food choices today either. Not, um, super bad. Like I still didn't eat sugar, but I definitely, I ate some potato wedges that I'm sure had some gluten on the coating and, you know, I'm not putting that in you guys, but I've shared with you guys, I'm staying away from gluten. Um, for digestive purposes and my stomach is all turning and messed up now because I ate those so <laughs> I shouldn't have done that and um, and I just was feeling all that anger and stress and anxiety when I made that choice too so um, I actually and then here it is it's late it's about 7 30 p.m. and I still haven't made this video for today or read my chapter so I read the chapter, and honestly, it wasn't that, like, convicting to me. I was feeling a little irritated with it even because, you know, although we know the whole point of this fast is to give up sugar and seek more of Jesus, it's kind of, like, a little redundant, like, every chapter, you know. Are you turning to Jesus? Are you turning to Jesus? <laughs> and I know we need that reminder every day, right? It's, it is the point. Um, but I like it, I guess, when I feel like there's a little more meat to the chapter that really hits me or spurs something to life. So, actually, I read it, and then I just, I almost just did my normal thing and got on here and just read through, you know, parts of the chapter, and and I was just like, Lord, I don't want to do that, and I don't want to put, put on this, you know, facade either. I just... I feel crappy right now and Lord I want to share something in truth and from the heart and just um, and I acknowledge to him you know like I didn't keep turning to you today you know I felt like oh I was overflowed with you and your love but then stuff happened and I quickly just turned away from you and let anger get the best of me and um, let things start eating at me and how often do we do that and he's so patient and good to us and um, so I just asked him give me something truthful Lord and I opened up my word and um, well I didn't open right to this actually it just hit me 
what I was craving, so like this chapter is talking about what are you actually craving, what I was craving is my husband's love. And I was so angry because I wasn't getting that. And I'm so frustrated with so many things. And I've preached over and over to women, I mean over years now, just how to turn to um, Jesus to be our husband, Jehovah Ishi, our husband. Um, that's something he's taught me that's so powerful and important to me. And, and But yet I still find myself getting away from it. And I'm still so desperate um, for that place in my life to be fully healed and good all the time. And, and um, anyway, so I thought, when's the last time I went into the Song of Solomon? You know, that's the love book in the Bible. And that we can take as a love song, you know, from God to us. And, and so I just opened to that and I want to read you Song of Solomon chapter 2 verses 8 to 16 the voice of my beloved behold he cometh leaping upon the mountains skipping upon the hills my beloved is like a roe or a young heart behold he standeth behind our wall he looketh forth at the windows showing himself through the lattice my beloved spake and said unto me rise up my love my fair one and come away for lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies until the day break, and the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe or a young heart upon the mountains of Bether. And obviously, you know, this is all very, um, like, allegorical. And, and um, I'm reading the King James Version here, too. So, <laughs> but there's so many things that stood out to me in that as I was reading it. You know, for one, just, um, you know, we've had the weather warming up lately and just thinking about springtime and the renewed hope that comes with spring. And I thought, wow, my beloved, my Jehovah is she that loves me. He's the creator of these beautiful birds and sun. And, and he made all of that beauty. And still he cherishes me above all that. And he cherishes you above all that. How beautiful is our beloved. How great. There's no greater husband. There's no greater lover. There's no greater friend. Um, and there's just so many good things in here. You know, and he's calling out to us. He's calling, you know, he doesn't reject us ever. He always wants to be with us. Always wants to spend time with us. Even when we reject him, he's just there. Come to me. Come to me. He wants us. Um, then I love this too. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. And just how beautiful is that? You know, like he just wants to grab hold of all those things that want to spoil your heart and attitude and um, get in between your and his relationship because he wants that tender relationship with you. He knows your heart is tender and he just wants to tend to that and protect it. I mean, that's that's just what hit me as I was reading it and how how beautiful is that. And my beloved is mine and I am his. Until the day break and the shadows flee away. That's our love. That the light of the world that makes the shadows flee away. 
And um, I just want to encourage you, whatever, that for me, that was my struggle today of what I'm craving is just that husband's love and um, and I needed to find it in Jesus again today. And Jesus really can and will be, wants to be your everything. And yes, do we want good relationships here on this earth? Yes, we do. Are we hoping for that? Are we trying to love each other and walk according to the word to accomplish that? I hope so. But um, we're going to fail one another at times. But Jesus is the one who will never fail. Never fail us. He's always faithful. Always there. So just turn to him and be blessed today. Bye, guys.